And together we're starting to break the sound barrier that has been silencing us and silencing our democracy for decades. Many of us know that, who've been struggling to be heard. So it's thanks to you, Occupy Boston, that we're starting to break through that sound barrier. And we are America. We are the great majority, the silenced majority. We are not a silent majority. We are a majority that has been silenced, that has been muzzled by the corporate sponsored media, the conglomerate media out there, who's not here covering us today and covering us as little as possible, but you are breaking through no matter what. So they've been silencing us, and so too have the corporate political parties. And we definitely want to keep our guard up because all of a sudden they are starting to line up on our bandwagon and jump on it and claim this movement for their own. And I think what's wonderful about Occupy Boston is that you have a high bar and a lot of courage and a lot of integrity and I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for leading the way and I think you are leading the way to a better America and a better world and for peace and for the planet. It's what we can do together. And you've not only broken the sound barrier for us, You've also brought a lot of people together to start talking to each other for the first time. So we're talking about getting together to achieve peace, to start breaking down Wall Street, because Wall Street is hogging our resources, our dollars, and our economy. And truth to tell, we don't need Wall Street. There is an alternative relocalized economy that keeps our dollars and our resources here in our communities that creates jobs without creating this incredible debt that Wall Street inflicts on us. So there's a whole new world that's possible and which is starting to come together here. And what we're talking about is really what the silenced majority is talking about. And that is an economy that works for everybody not just the top 1% who's now hogging the resources more, more resources than 90% of people all put together. The top 1% has more. The richest 400 people have more than 154 million people all put together. Is that fair? Is that the kind of economy we want? And is that the kind of economy we need to settle for? No. Absolutely not, which is why we're here to say no more of that. We're also talking about bringing the troops home. There was a poll. So yesterday, right, was the 10 year anniversary of the Afghanistan war. Is Afghanistan safer? Is it more democratic? Has, have women been liberated from violence and oppression in Afghanistan? No. no, we've absolutely gone backwards. Afghanistan is a more violent place than it has ever been, and this most recent year, 2011, is the worst of all. The, uh, the, the General McChrystal, one of the five-star generals who's in charge over there, is saying, oh, in 10 years, We've gotten halfway there. So what is this? We have to have a 20 year war that continues to rob our schools and our healthcare system and, and our, our resources and our safety net and our public libraries. We're all starving for the incredible trillions that are being spent uh, on the Middle East wars for oil. And in fact, Brown University recently put out a study saying that those wars, Afghanistan and Iraq, have actually cost us four to five trillion dollars over the past decade. That's money that we should be using here and that we can be using here. So the majority is with us. That poll that was done by CBS yesterday, I think, said that 60, over 60% 60 of people want to start bringing the troops home now. Barack Obama is talking about 
basically a 30,000 troop reduction. That's one third, not even one third of the troops that are over there. So he may talk about uh, his Nobel Peace Prize, but he's not doing what needs to be done. And the American people is behind us. Almost two thirds of people say we never should have been involved in Afghanistan to start with. It has not made Afghanistan safer. It certainly hasn't made us safer. The Taliban is alive and well, and we know that our intervention, which is basically distributing weapons to warlords, that's what we do when we fight these wars, by distributing those weapons and arming the various warring factions, we've basically uh, armed and empowered terrorist organizations. So we need to fight terror with hospitals and with schools and with health care and the things that people really need and with an equitable economy here and globally. That's really how you fight terrorism. So it's no surprise that the, uh, that the warmongers in the Pentagon and in the White House have been taking us in exactly the wrong direction. And the majority wants to bring those troops home and bring those war dollars home, and that's what we need to do. The majority wants health care as a human right. Anybody out there want health care as a human right? Yeah, how about it? And we know, is this going to like cost us a lot of money? No, it's actually going to save us a lot of money because that health care dollar, you may know, is getting actually gobbled up by all the administrative red tape and bureaucracy with this private health care system. So what Obama wants to do is basically Romney care. And for those who try to have health care here in Massachusetts, you know that Romney care is not working so well. Our health care system is going bankrupt and we're going bankrupt trying to pay for it. We know that working people are paying twice as much now, more than twice as much, than they were 10 years ago for our health our, our health care premiums. So we can't keep going on like this. We can fix it. We have the solution, and that solution is right here at Occupy Boston now. We want health care as a human right with a single-payer Medicare for All system now. And it will save us money now like bringing the troops home now, is costing us a trillion dollars a year for this. A How much? $22,000 a day. For each person, perhaps? I mean, it's an enormous amount of money. It's, it's like, yeah, I think it's more like an hour, or maybe it's a second. It's a huge amount of money, a trillion dollars a year that's being spent for this enormous military industrial security complex that just keeps getting bigger and bigger. Do we need it? No. 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 Has it helped us? No. Can we bring those war dollars home and put them back into what people need? So it's human needs, not corporate greed and not the military madness. So all of that we can have. Um, we want to tax the rich. Because they're, as their riches have mushroomed and their wealth has approximately tripled and quadrupled over the last 10 years, do you know what's happened to their tax burden? It's gone down. It's like been cut in half. So they're making out like bandits, but they're not contributing to what all of us are paying for. We're paying for the roads and the transportation and the mail system and the courts and all the other things that we all need and they benefit from. So they need to start kicking in too. You may have heard, you know, we've all heard about the bailouts, the big bailouts of Wall Street. And you may have heard it was about $800 billion that we paid out as part of this TARP program. Well, you may, it's a well kept secret. It wasn't just $800 billion. It turns out there were many, many trillions more. In fact, $16 trillion, if you can wrap your head around it, that was basically given away as low interest and zero interest loans that was given to 
the biggest banks and financial institutions, not only in this country, but in Europe and around the world, and the biggest corporations, that's who the Fed, behind closed doors, gave $16 trillion to. When we could have been using that money here, instead of loaning it to the big banks to get them out of the hole that they created, we could put that money into our small businesses and to our municipalities and our state governments and start creating jobs right here. We need, yes, in communities like this one, and we need to actually do that. Instead of giving away $16 trillion in these zero interest loans, or low interest loans, almost zero, we could be putting that money back in and creating jobs right here, right now, in Boston, in San Francisco, in Chicago, all over, in the Berkshires, on the Cape, we could be creating those jobs right here and right now with that money. So we can fix this, and we can fix it now by doing the right thing. And I want to just leave you with one thought, and then maybe they're joining us or we're joining them, I don't know, but we're all working in this together. Um, there are more bailouts down the line. You're going to hear efforts to rally around the Obama jobs plan and the Obama tax plan which is a tiny fraction of what we deserve. The Obama jobs plan is talking about 2 million jobs, but there are 25 million people who need them. We can create all the jobs we need by turning those, that $16 trillion that we gave, that the Fed gave away, back to creating jobs here. Or we can create those jobs by bringing the troops home and bringing home trillions of dollars that we're spending uh, uh, decimating war, decimating schools and hospitals over in the Middle East. So there's a way to do this and uh, what can I say, exercise caution because there are groups that will be coming to us saying let's rally behind this great plan that our fearless leaders in Washington, they're going to solve this problem and give us two million jobs. Well remember that's a drop in the bucket of what we deserve. We deserve jobs for all. Everybody deserves a job. Everybody who can work and who's willing to work deserves a job. And that's how we've gotten out of depressions and recessions before. And that's basically what we're in right now. And we need a Green New Deal. And just one other thing to put in the back of your minds. It's not only that there's a sellout that we're going to be asked to support. A very tiny portion of the jobs that we deserve we're going to be asked to support. And we need to keep raising the bar because that's why people are electrified and just really excited and inspired by Occupy Boston because it has a high bar and it's uncompromising and it's a big vision. So we need to ask for that from our politicians and our elected leaders. They need to be accountable to us, the 99%. And let's be clear about that. They need to be accountable to us by creating a jobs program that will really do work for us. Not this window dressing of a two million jobs program, which is like what they already did. That's what the stimulus was in 2008. And we see how much good that did. And what they're talking about now, all the hullabaloo, is about a program that's actually smaller than what already didn't work in 2008. So we need a real Manhattan Project, a real World War II level um, peace campaign that brings the troops home and that puts the war dollars into creating the jobs here. The other point is that watch out because we're going to be told that this tax break uh, that, that, that Obama wants to repeal and it's about $800 billion for the rich. It's a tiny fraction of what's out there and what we deserve. In fact, what he's talking about, it's, it's a small tax on people earning over $250,000, but it could be much steeper and it needs to be more graduated so that we're taxing more from the people who are making more. That's what a graduated, progressive, and just tax system is all about. They shouldn't be allowed to make out like bandits. And the Obama system, will allow them to continue doing that. And here's why. He's only going to tax income. But when you're really rich, 
Where does your money come from? It comes from capital gains. It doesn't come from income. This is a bait and switch. This is a distraction. This is income tax, a small portion of the taxable income of the super wealthy. It's about 20% actually of that available income for taxation. So it's a small piece of income, but it misses the boat, which is really on the capital gains tax. That's where we really need to go in order to ask those who are making out like bandits to actually bring back their fair share. And we can start fixing these problems. We don't have to live with a poverty rate now that's, that's sucked 46 million Americans into it, two million more than last year. How many people don't know somebody who's in poverty? Does anybody know someone who's not in poverty? I mean, a lot of us are in poverty or know somebody who's in poverty or have a son or a mother or a sister or a brother who's moving into poverty. It's the latest place to go these days. And we shouldn't be expected to live with that. And the road is only going to get rockier ahead. It's not like there's smooth sailing. Things are coming, you know, things are coming down heavy. There's a big crisis, as you know, in Europe and our banks are every bit as much in bed with that crisis as they were with our own. So uh, we're all going to be hit with what's going on in Greece. And that austerity program that's being inflicted on the people of Europe is, being, is coming. It's already on the way and it's going to get worse here too. So what's happening here at Occupy Boston is really exciting because it's bringing us together around an agenda for people, peace, and the planet, for creating jobs that put everybody back to work in a way that improves our communities, makes them healthier, greens our economy, greens our environment, and it gets rid of the scourge of climate change. We can fix the climate problem by creating the green jobs that put us back to work, and oh, by the way, they also make us healthy at the same time because green jobs are about what? What are green jobs about? Uh, like our food, life, life. <laughs> our food, um, about clean energy, about renewables, about our health, about taking care of each other, about social services. All of those are green jobs. We can create them with a government program, a Green New Deal that jumpstarts the economy, that transforms it, and brings us into the green economy of the future, which we're ready for, and we deserve, and we can transform our healthcare system into a system that actually makes us healthy, not a sick care system, which is what we've got right now, which doesn't do the job. We can actually have a healthcare system. How many people would like to see that? A system that actually kept us healthy. And how many would like to see a Green New Deal that makes sure that you have a job and that greens your community while you're at it? Green New Deal! Exactly. And how many would like to see a healthcare system right now that will start saving us money and save our health at the same time? Do we want that now? All right. So to do all of that, it's all about working together through Occupy Boston. And I think Occupy Boston is a social movement. It's a, it's a legal movement. It's a, it's a direct action movement. And at some point, it's going to be a political movement too. Because what good would it do us to get Wall Street or to fight Wall Street, I'd say, on every front, but not fight them in the White House, which is where they're living now. Does that make sense to you? We need to fight them everywhere, not leave the ballot box out of it. That needs to be part of our fight. We don't give up the rest of it, but we've got to fight there too. And you probably know, you know, that, that we have protections. We had protections to protect us from the predators on Wall Street, and they were repealed by the likes of Larry Summers, who was the first person that Barack Obama brought into the White House. And the next person was Tim Geithner, who looked the other way at the Federal Reserve in New York while the meltdown on Wall Street was going play, was taking place. 
he managed not to see it. So Wall Street is alive and well in Washington, D.C. and in the White House. So they may, at some point, pretend to be on our side, but, uh, you know, fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. Let's not get fooled twice. Let's keep our eyes on the prize, like, like Occupy Boston is doing. And let's keep raising the bar for the healthy, just, secure green future that we deserve and the democracy it'll take to get us there. Thank you so much. Keep up the good work and let's keep working together. Thank you.